Welcome to the Unpacking Sunday podcast, where we take a deeper look at what God is speaking to you, to our church, and to the world around us. So grab a coffee, sit back, and let's unpack it together. We're back, Luke. We are Here we back. Are. Hello, church. I, I hate doing the opening. I know. Yeah, let's I- not cut it, but let's let you do the opening. Okay. But don't cut it. I want them to have both and then okay. just hey, for fun. Okay. Hey, church, welcome to Unpacking Sunday. Oh, yeah. You should do the opening from now on. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Welcome back. Okay. We're here. Um, we are not unpacking Sunday this week, but we are coming back to our summer series like we promised and doing a few bonus episodes. Right. Because we did already unpack last Sunday, Pastor Reg's message. Yes, we did. So Moments ago. A, yeah. Just a few minutes ago. So this is a bonus episode, as promised. Do you want me to make a little ditty that says, bonus episode? Yeah, and then insert it right here. Okay. It's a bonus episode. 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 Perfect. Okay. Thank you. And so today we're talking all about church, church hurt. hurt. Church hurt. <laughs> it was awkward. <laughs> yeah, but we are talking about we it. Are. What is it? Yeah. What does it mean? Is it what real? do I do about it? Is it true? Is it is it true? Is it actually a thing? Is it? Is and it? what do we do about it if it is? Do people get hurt in church? Okay, so maybe we need to classify what is church hurt yeah. to begin with, yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. does it just mean like getting hurt at church? Getting hurt? Or it it seems like this phrase has become something, like it mm-hmm. kind of means something. Mm-hmm. So I think it's more than like someone hurt my feelings. I think so typically. too. Typically. I think so too. I think. Tell me, when you think about it, what do you, what does it mean? I think the breakdown of it is, is that oftentimes... People, much like what we were actually talking about in our previous episode with uh, this in Romans about not looking down upon uh, or looking too high of of yourself or down on others, there's this thing that can fall into that there's roles in church, there is positions in church, there's, um, you know, there, uh, we have to play our part in to make Sunday happen. So myself, I'm the worship leader here at the church. Um, and you are the pastor. So, um, off, sometimes we come across people who, um, feel that their calling or feel that their role in the church is, needs to be one of significance. And I, this isn't always just, this is just kind of a, an example of how it can happen. And oftentimes if that doesn't fit the, the, you know, Let's just say, like, if it doesn't fit the the DNA of your church or your belief system or something, and those people have to be communicated to, like, mm. I don't actually believe that this is your role or, or I don't think this is a good fit for you. Lots of times there can be a clash of personality, clash of ego, clash of things there where there can create be created this almost a rejection where people feel like I wanted to serve there and the church didn't want me. So the church in a whole doesn't want me. I don't Mm. like church, you know, that kind of thing where, as opposed to, and sometimes it can be, sometimes the church is in the wrong. Sometimes the production value is too high and we want it to be a concert and you're not a good enough musician. So you can't play here or, Mm. or, you know, or it can be other things, but it's this kind of, there's this, this personality and, a situation where people can feel that they've been rejected. They feel that um, the church has denied them their right or even um, in belief systems or, you know, like rejection of, you can even get into arguments about, you know, sin and sexuality and everything like that. Right. Right. So all those things can come into play. So there's like some kind of disagreement. Mm -hmm. I've heard of people talking about church hurt, like maybe, um, yeah, there was a disagreement. Maybe they were made to be embarrassed in public in yeah. church, and so that causes church hurt. Yeah. Or maybe some kind of discipline wasn't, they didn't feel like it was handled properly. Right. So then that causes church hurt. 
or they feel like there was some kind of misuse of information or uh, the person in charge was misusing or abusing their power and authority. So right. that can cause people to right. feel like they are hurt by the church. And so is church hurt? Like, is it a thing? Like when you think about it, like that's the first question we want to talk mm-hmm. about. What is it? Is it true? Does it happen? All these kind of things. Tell me, what are your thoughts when you hear about this? I do think, you know, it is. The church is made up of imperfect people. The church is made up of people who are doing their best and who are, you know, will, who make mistakes, 100%. So, in those mistakes, I think sometimes there becomes, hurt will happen, can and will happen. You know, I can uh, remember the first time I tried out for a worship team and I was told by that person that I'm not good enough and I will never be good Mm -hmm. enough to be a worship leader. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I could have taken that and it could have fueled a church isn't for me, me being worship isn't for me, but the Lord really just kind of protected my heart in that. And I just kind of felt like... I don't think that's true because I feel this burning sense in my heart from the the Holy Spirit speaking to me and leading me into this. So I'm going to continue on my journey and let that person's opinion be that opinion. I had a very similar experience, actually. Okay. When I was a teenager, my very first crush, I was singing worship, had my eyes shut, things like that, Mm. doing my thing. They were sitting in front of me in church. And then we were told, okay, you can be seated now. Worship was over. And she turned around and she stared me straight in the eye and she said, Mike, you have the worst singing voice I've ever heard in my entire life. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Yeah. It could have been church hurt. (laughs) It It could have been. Pastor's daughter. Pastor's daughter. Yeah. Brutally honest. Yeah. Very honest, right? She learned (laughs) honesty from a young age. Oh, wow. But. Yeah. I thought you were going to talk about joke, not be about being a worship leader, but uh, yeah. as in ministry. But yeah. no, okay. But you know, okay. So we're saying like church hurt can happen. Hundred yeah. percent, can and does happen. And absolutely, there are things that happen in church that should not be happening. Oh yeah, and absolutely. I, there are ministry leaders that act incorrectly, and there are pastors that do abuse their position. And we see it happening so often. We do hear about it happening often. Let's not become dismayed because for every one that we hear about, Mm -hmm. there are probably hundreds of Mm -hmm. pastors who are being faithful to their calling. So even thousands. Yeah. Let's not be dismayed with what we hear in the news. Good point. But, uh, so it is a thing. Church hurt happens for sure. People are hurt in the church and some dramatically and traumatically Mm -hmm. and others where it's like our feelings were a little bit bumped into. Mm -hmm. Um, And, but often when we talk about church hurt, what I think happens is no matter where on that continuum of like, they hurt my feelings to uh, they abused me. Mm -hmm. um, Typically in a situation where people are talking about church hurt, it leads the person to therefore not trust the church or not participate in mm-hmm. church at all anymore right, right. because they have been hurt by the church for one reason or right, another. Right. Talk to me about that. Have you seen that happen anywhere? Um, and then what do we do about that? Yeah. Well, yeah, no, I have a really good friend who um, went to Bible college, um, got his bachelor, bachelor, bachelor's degree in pastoral ministry, and... Um, then kind of went out and started to pursue ministry roles. And he was also um, a worship, you know, a musician and everything, although maybe um, like not the most amazing singer, but a beautiful heart. Mm. And um, he was, um, yeah, basically told by his, um, he was hired in term by a church to um, head up worship. And he, um, when they decided to, hire somebody for that position that he also applied for and he was rejected in that sense i think it kind of broke something in him and he he left church completely and um it's like i i don't know exactly what's happening completely on a heart level for him but he is his relationship with god and he is i don't really see him walking a really close walk with the lord anymore and that's a good example for me where you know he it's hard because I think on either end, um, those ministry leaders may 
may have failed him in a sense of that he was being pastored by them. Mm. And, um, and there was a rejection there that maybe wasn't followed up upon or pursued as a person. And, and at the same time in him, I think he was finding a lot of his identity in that role. Mm. And so, that, you know, that's a situation where I am personally in my life where I have seen where I kind of see the pieces of what's left in him just not involved with church and also have seen how even in his family and in his, the lives of his children with him not walking with the Lord, it's like there's some real deterioration there. And mm-hmm. it's just, it's kind of hard to watch to, to be a person who I love them and I, and I want to support them and love them, but he's also not really open to hearing about what I think about it. So that's kind of a hard situation there, you know? Right. But I think that's kind of what we're talking about is like, because of a poor situation Mm -hmm. um, that's valid, Mm -hmm. all the things that he's feeling and that Mm -hmm. have happened are valid, Mm -hmm. but they have therefore decided that they don't want to participate in this thing called church anymore Mm -hmm. or even Mm -hmm. talk about it. Mm -hmm. You're saying. And so that's what we really see when we see this whole Uh, conversation about church hurt is that it leads people to the conclusion that church isn't safe and I don't need to participate in it or I'm not going to and I don't Mm -hmm. want to participate in this abusive structure anymore. That's really what it comes down to. And so is that the proper conclusion to come to? Oh, absolutely not. Tell me more about that. Uh, I think, again, like I touched on, there are things happening under the surface where there was, um, I think, an unhealthy understanding of what the relationship with church is. You know, I think, um, like, you know, this this friend of mine found his identity in that role and didn't find his identity in Christ, hmm. you know. And with that, from that, has made decisions where his relationship with Christ, as far as I can see from the outside, has really deteriorated. Mm. And so with that, you see sin and and worldly stuff come into their family where it's like, oh gosh, you know, it's like there's some really unhealthy decisions being made there and those sorts of things. But with that, it goes, the, the foundations of their walk with Christ is, is that if we are fully like grasping onto who Jesus is for our life, there's nothing that a person or an organization or, you know, uh, a church or a fellow believer can say that can shake you from the fact that, you know, I am lost without Jesus. And Mm -hmm. that um, no matter um, if doors close or doors open, you know, that his way is the way that I want to live my life. Mm -hmm. You know, I think if that's the situation, church hurt isn't going to happen because, or not, not, no, that's not true. Church hurt is probably always going to happen because of humanity, but at the same, but this outcome of falling away from church, it's like there's, there's a crumbling of a foundation that, that could have been stronger. Mm -hmm. So I guess as, as church leaders, you know, what do we need to do to make sure that the believers in our care are um, not, you know, not going to just blow over when a storm, storm comes, you know? Yeah, there's yeah. so much in what you just said. One of them, I, yeah, it's identity. It's like where we, and but also where we point people, mm-hmm. right? Because I've seen so many times that when people are invested in a person in their church mm-hmm. more than they are in Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. they are damning themselves to be hurt yeah. one day 100%. because we are all going to mess things up. Yeah. Right. And it's the same for the person who is the victim of church hurt, right? You've messed things up too in mm-hmm. other areas. We all have, mm-hmm. we've all mishandled things. And so if my trust and the final say of how I feel about myself and how I feel about the church is wrapped up in this person, mm-hmm that's one surefire way that I'm going to be let down. Mm -hmm. And it's not only like uh, the leaders in the church either, because I've heard church hurt that has come out of just fellow members in the church, right? This person invited me to the church and now they don't care about me. Or, Mm -hmm. you know, this greeter said this to me, Mm -hmm. right? But it's like, okay, yeah, they messed it up. Mm -hmm. But why did you come to church? Mm -hmm. Why, 
why are you part of this thing called being a Christian, being a follower mm-hmm. of Jesus? Right. Is it because of that person? Mm-hmm. And we see this so often, actually, with what we talked about a minute ago, is like when we see pastors fail, mm-hmm. there often will be people who don't know how to handle that. Yeah. And so they'll walk away from church, right? Or, or there's many people who will say to me that they don't trust church because look at all the pastors who fail. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, but that's not that's not church like that's not why i'm here right right, right? and so it the, we it is imperative like what you said is that we find our identity in christ but also that we're pointing people to mm-hmm. jesus right mm-hmm. and i know even you're working on that in the worship ministry too mm-hmm. it's like it's not about playing an instrument it's not about being up front it's about that we know and we love jesus mm-hmm. because that is what stands the test of time mm-hmm. and that's what's going to keep us when people tick us off mm-hmm. that's even what is going to keep us when people are intentionally mm-hmm. treating us poorly yeah. or abusively jesus will keep us and i'm not I, I think we should maybe talk a little bit about what would be like some smart things to do if right now I'm experiencing hurt in my Mm, church because I'm not advocating for enduring abusive behavior in church. That's not what I'm saying. I know that. And so, but what would be some smart things or even some biblical perspective that we could lend to the listener if I feel like I'm being hurt in any way, uh, whether I'm just being slighted or I feel like I'm being abused in my church, what could I do? Wow. Well, I think it's so easy in this moment to say something like, pray about it. But I think it's like, um, it has to be something so much more significant than that. There's protocols and structures. I'm just going to talk, let's just talk about our church right now. Because I don't, Mm -hmm. you know, like the big C church is a a totally different thing. But in our church, we have protocols and structures that um, the ministry leaders um, are like absolutely on board with having those conversations with people. And I think a big part of it is you can't walk in unforgiveness and you can't walk in bitterness and, uh, and be harboring these things or, or even having this kind of dialogue with yourself of like, this isn't a big deal or, or I, or I don't want to cause a ruckus or I don't want to cause a, you know, uh, uh, stir up something. It's like, if you feel like, there's something wrong happening with your involvement at, at your church or our church. We are here to have conversations with it and to walk through those things with you. So I think it's important that people know that we, you know, we, we want to be here. We're not aloof. We mm-hmm. want to be here to be available for people to have conversations and to, to pray with those mm-hmm. people and to walk through those situations together and to find health, to find wholeness and to find clarity. I think it's really important that people know and hear that because um, they're like church is made up of people mm-hmm. and people can be really messed up and weird. And mm-hmm. so, um, and yes, we have messed up and weird people in our church too. Mm-hmm. So yeah, they're on the, they're on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, we're right, right here. Now. Yay. Yeah. Um, but so I think like we just, this whole idea of hierarchy and structure and I don't want to bother the pastors or I don't want to bother ministry leaders or my problems are little or, or it's like, or it's too big. Mm. Any of those things. It's like, right. we are, clinging on to Jesus and we're doing our best to find our identity in him. And we want to walk through big and little journeys with people to make sure that, that they can feel that they are heard. Mm-hmm. They're known. Mm-hmm. And that, uh, as a church that we want to, we want to love people first. Right. Yeah. And so let's balance that a little bit because there are some things that feel hurtful, mm-hmm. but really I just don't like it oh, yeah. or I have a preference. So then it's like, Oh, so now I'm hurt. Yeah. And so I agree with what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Still, go and talk to the person, even if it's the ministry leader that Mm -hmm. you're a part of, whether you're at Mm -hmm. our church or somewhere else, go talk to them. But I think that we've also lost in our culture, including in church, Mm -hmm. that there is a hierarchy, there's a spiritual hierarchy in the church that really, if you don't like something, but your ministry leader is saying this is the way we're doing it, and Mm -hmm. it's just a preference, I'm Mm -hmm. not talking about there being abusive or sinful. Right, okay. I'm not talking about that. Preference. I'm talking about like, I don't like that you are doing it this way. Right. Right. Sometimes 
we have to suck it up. Yeah. Right. And that's not church hurt. Yeah. That's just, okay, you don't have a preference, but this person's put in charge. It's like being at work. Yeah. Your boss is going to tell you what to do. Yeah. All those same kind of things. Right. And we have lost both in the church and outside the church, this attitude of submission to authority. Mm-hmm. We've lost it. We all yeah. think that we get to be the authority of our own life and no totally. one gets to tell me what to do. Totally. That being said, I don't care what level of church or if they're your ministry leader or your brother and sister in Christ or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, If people are living sinful and they're being abusive, which is sin toward Mm -hmm. you, Mm -hmm. there is a biblical guideline of what you should do, Mm -hmm. right? If you see your brother or sister living in sin, Matthew chapter, it's 18, tells you, go and approach them about it. One-on-one. This is how you start. You start one-on-one. Yeah. And it's going to be challenging, That's gonna be especially scary, especially if they have actually been abusive to you. Yes. It's terrifying. Yeah. But that's the biblical mandate. If someone is sinning, mm-hmm. that you would go and tell them one-on-one mm-hmm. and you would correct them. Mm-hmm. And people say, I don't want to be judgy. I don't want to be mm-hmm. this. Actually, as believers, we're mm-hmm. called to judge one another, well, right? We don't judge the world, right. but we judge one another's actions. Mm-hmm. That's what we do. And we hold each other to account. Mm-hmm. And so you go to your brother or sister and you tell them what you see and tell them the correct way and you have a conversation with them. Mm -hmm. Then scripture would teach us that if they don't change their ways, Mm -hmm. that you bring someone along with you. Okay. And so this isn't to gossip and this Mm -hmm. isn't permission to go and tell everybody's business, Mm -hmm. but this is for accountability. Mm -hmm. So typically I would suggest you bring like a mature believer or you bring maybe if they're in your ministry, right? You bring, um, a ministry leader with you or whatever, Mm -hmm. and you go and talk to them respectfully and kindly, and you bring up the issue again. Wow. If it's still not addressed, you need to go and talk to your pastor. Yeah. Right. You, and actually beyond that, if it's still not addressed, it needs to be brought before the church. Mm -hmm. That's what needs to happen. And there needs to be discipline for this person. I read a story recently about a, a wife who was cheating on her husband. And the husband followed all of these steps, uh, confronted his wife. It didn't stop. Brought a a friend along, a mutual friend. It still didn't stop. Brought the pastor in. It still didn't stop. And so the pastor brought her in front of the church and told the church what had happened. And she writes the story. This is the most loving thing anyone could have done for me. Wow. Because she says it wasn't until then when I realized the impact that what I was doing had on the body. Wow. Wow. That I real that I realized I needed to change. Wow! Right, and so we get in our heads like, how dare somebody yeah. do that to me? Yeah. But again, we we just need to live according to what the Bible says, yeah. right? And there are going to be consequences. And I I mean this also for pastors, mm-hmm. right? And this is why we see like pastors mess up. Mm-hmm. And so if we all need to live according to Scripture the best that we can, and then we all need to be open to correction the best that we can, mm-hmm. right? And if we're all living humbly. Um, then hopefully we can avoid these situations like we're talking about today with church hurt. Yeah. Right? Because imagine if we would have pastors and leaders in the church who lived life of repentance quickly. Wow. We'd avoid a lot of what we're talking about. Yeah. What do you think about that? Well, firstly, I, f- I found that the like that story is just shocking how counterculture that is and how like I just felt like as I'm listening to you say that, feel my like, ee, this is that's so embarrassing or that's so like hard to, but like it's so good and to to hear that was the response. Like, yes, I think so often we can fall into this mindset where in like outside culture is applicable in church, but mm-hmm. really how we have to live is a biblical culture mm-hmm. based on what the Bible tells us to do. And yeah, so I love that. I love that. That's how. That's the result of that moment where Mm -hmm. I did not see that coming. Right. (laughs) Right? That just sounds like, oh my gosh, that's mortifying. Right. But to hear, no, this is good and this is healthy. I was shocked when I read that. Right. Yeah. And I think like also along the way, it is not permission. Again, I'm not justifying any action that has led someone to have church hurt. Mm -hmm. We need to fix our behavior as a Mm -hmm. church, generally speaking. as the church. Mm-hmm. But I'm also saying like, if you're experiencing church hurt or you don't like something that's happening or someone isn't treating you properly in the church, it's not permission for you to run your mouth 
no. about them, right? No. Like I said, scripture gives us a way to deal with these issues if mm-hmm. there's sin happening in the body. Right. And so I see that also happen too often where people think they can just run their mouth because this person hurt me. So I'm mm-hmm. just going to tell my story to whoever right, I want. Right. And it's like, that's damaging the body. Yeah. It's not helping anything. Right. And so we need to follow what scripture says and we need to approach the person, bring someone along with us, talk to the pastor and then expose it to the church if that's what it well. comes to. And so, um, so I think we've come to the end of our time, but we've seen, okay, church hurt is a thing. Yes. For sure. Is this the first, is it true? Yes. <laughs> yeah, it is <laughs> it a is thing. The yeah. first, yes, it is true. Yes. It is, it is true. <laughs> yeah. But it is not true that right. the appropriate response to being hurt to in church is to quit on yeah. church. Right. Because this is the bride and the body of Christ, and right. it includes you, right. and includes me, and we're messed up. Right. And we're going to get it wrong, and we all need to live in repentance. For sure. And so... Uh, I'm sorry to everyone who's listening, who's been hurt by Mm -hmm. the church or by our church. Mm -hmm. Um, And we need to get better at working those things out together. Um, And so it's my prayer for people that they would find a place that they can call home and that is pointing them to Jesus. Because ultimately that's what's going to keep us on track is as we seek Christ together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's all our time, Luke. Okay. Well, have a good rest of your week, friends. We'll see you again soon. Unpacking Sunday is a podcast of Caribou Road Christian Fellowship Church. If you're interested in more information, please check out our website at www.crcfchurch.com.